call to the this webinar on the global climate change basically it will be highlighting the recognizable effects of climate change and the our host for this webinar is dr b s palla he is a scientist at the pushpa gujral science city he will give his into this uh, most important and uh, uh, this cha challenge we are facing in today's world that is of the climate change i welcome dr b s balla to take over the presentation thanks thank you hello everybody let me introduce myself i'm i'm dr palla the topic of my webinar is global climate change recognizable effect of climate change so before starting i will give you a brief outline the what of the topics i will cover starting with the mother earth mother earth we have the uh, earth, we have the ideal atmosphere then uh, greenhouse effect we are various gases involved the carbon cycle input and output then global warming climate what is climate what is climate change then uh, who is responsible either we uh, sun to blame or the anthropogenic activities human activities then various evidences concerning global climate change like uh, global temperature change rise in the temperature sea level rise warming of oceans then extreme weather phenomena then uh, for the glacier retreats at the polar region then comes uh, this ocean acidification these are the various evidences so the various causes natural can be volcanic eruption and then man made anthropogenic causes human made causes these are the causes then the significant impact of the climate change various impacts like on the agriculture on human health vector borne diseases then non biodiversity and the various strategies which are involved at the national and international level so these are the topics what i covered one by one starting global climate change recognizable effect of climate change we we are at earth earth is a gold goldy lock planet planet goldy lock planet means it is not too hot not too cold ideal situation ideal atmosphere and the conditions are just right for life to flourish and if we go for our neighboring planets mars venus the planet mars not it has not enough greenhouse effect the mars has a very thin atmosphere without a thermal blanket mars cannot retain any heat energy on average so the temperature is very low at mars average temperature that is minus 60 degrees then if we move to venus venus that is uh, it has uh, got too much of greenhouse effect it uh, has a very dense atmosphere having much carbon dioxide producing a runway greenhouse effect It leads to a very high average surface surface temperature that is about 462 degrees centigrade. So, what is greenhouse effect? The sunlight reaches the earth. Some energy is reflected back. Some is absorbed and radiated as heat. Most of the heat is absorbed by the greenhouse gases and reflected in all directions, warming the earth. This is a natural phenomenon. What greenhouse effect? naturally arising greenhouse effect keeps the planet our planet in an ideal situation in a friendly situation uh, uh, average temperature is 15 degree centigrade but due to anthropogenic activities man made activities the man's uh, human have interfered with the energy balance of the planet mainly through the burning of fossil fuels and excessive deforestation so the level of various gases greenhouse gases particularly carbon dioxide in the earth atmosphere has rising consistently for decades and trap extra heat and causing the temperature to rise leads to greenhouse effect global warming so natural greenhouse uh, greenhouse effect and the human enhanced greenhouse effect depicting the various gases they absorb the reflected uh, heat uh, it uh, started uh, the heat escapes into the space so it causes enhance the greenhouse effect the various gases which are involved for the greenhouse gases affect are the major is the carbon dioxide uh, 
देन सिग्नल ऐसे रखे हुए हैं हेलो हेलो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड देन मीथेन देन नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड देन पल फ्लोरोकार्बन हाइड्रोफ्लोरोकार्बन सल्फर हेक्साफ्लोराइड these are the major greenhouse gases so uh, now the come uh, global warming potential of these gases if we go for this global warming potential uh, global warming potential of human generated greenhouse gases is a measure of how much heat each gas traps in the atmosphere that is related to carbon dioxide if we correlate carbon dioxide is in one then methane is 25 nitrous oxide on 300 and fluorinated gases it comes to be 1000 to 10000 times and the percentage how much each human caused greenhouse gas contribution for the global warming is carbon dioxide contribution is about 76% the largest then comes the methane then comes the nitrous oxide then comes the fluorinated gases this uh, depicting the solar energy budget Uh, the input, the incoming solar energy, uh, then some uh, radiation got reflected by the atmosphere, then reflected by the clouds, reflected from the earth surface, then uh, uh, some are absorbed by the atmosphere, absorbed by the cloud, and it reaches the land. And what portion it get absorbed and further it get reflected back. If we go for this carbon balance, carbon cycle, starting with the uh, input. Uh, Input of the carbon dioxide from the fossil fuel burn, uh, burning, then fire, decomposition process, then respiration process, then uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide. Further, it is used; it is got removed through the process of photosynthesis. Then uh, input to the oceans, then uh, in the oceans, uh, and, uh, further uh, this uh, formation of carbonated rocks. So carbon is present in the atmosphere and the ocean. So huge. Huge amount of this carbon are stored into the earth in the form of fossil fuels and sedimentary rocks. This carbon, mainly uh, in the form of carbon dioxide. So before the industrial revolution, everything got balanced. Mostly everything got balanced. Addition of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases to the atmosphere balanced by its removal. But after this industrial revolution, in the 80s, causes of uh, A rapid uh, build of carbon dioxide human activities. It leads to burning of fossil fuels, agricultural practices, deforestation. It uh, leads to imbalance of the this carbon cycle, and further leads to climate change. This is the contribution global carbon dioxide emission. Uh, India figures among the top 12 contributors to global greenhouse gases emissions. Its relative share is low in terms of per capita emission. Is among the twelve contributors. What is global warming? So due to this greenhouse effect, of, uh, global warming is a long heating of the Earth climate, primarily responsible due to greenhouse gases, fossil fuel burner, which uh, increases the heat trapping. So what uh, the evidence is the plan the our planet the planet average surface temperature due to this. Uh, Warming has uh, risen about about 0.9 degree Celsius since the late 19th century. This uh, change is driven largely by due to anthropogenic activities, the man-made activities. Most of the warming occurred in the last 35 years. Within the in that last 35 years, the five warmest year uh, warmest years on record taking place since 2010. Not only was that, uh, not only then, then this two uh, thousand year two thousand sixteen was the warmest year on the record. And if you talk about the eight of the twelve months that make up the year from January to September, except this June, but the warmest on the record for this for this particular year. So climate, starting with the climate, what is climate? Earth climate is dynamic and always changing, but the changes that are occurring today they are more frequent. They are more because of the anthropogenic activities and if we differentiate between weather and climate weather is a locally over short period weather refer to atmospheric condition at the local level and if if we go for climate climate refer to the long term regional or global average of the temperature humidity and rainfall pattern over the seasons years or decades 
climate change. What is climate change? Climate change is a long-term change in the average weather pattern that defines our local, regional, or global climate. If uh, we refer this as static, a significant variation in either the mean state of the climate or its variability persisting for extended period. Major causes and changes and photogenic causes. Global warming versus climate change. Global warming refers long-term warming. Climate change encompasses this global warming, but refer to the broader range. The changes that are happening due to this global warming, like including sea level rise, shrinking the mountain glaciers, accelerating ice melt in the Greenland and Antarctica polar regions. So uh, afterwards, definitely it's coming in our mind, it is reasonable. The sun, is the sun to blame for the current global warming trend? or it is due to anthropogenic or man-made activities. As a fundamental source of energy that drives our climate change. Is there any changes there that is responsible for climate change? In for that study, since NASA has studied in uh, since 1978, a series of satellite instruments have been measured the energy output of the sun. The satellite data show a very slight drop in solar irradiance which is a measure of the amount of energy the sun gets off. So over this time period, so the sun does not appear to be responsible. There is no major change. This is the graph showing compare comparison between the global surface temperature change, that red line, and the sun energy that Earth receives, the yellow line in watts per meter since 1880. From this uh, data, it's clear that uh, since 1715, the average amount of energy coming from the sun either remained constant or increased very minutely, very slightly. There is increase. If the warming were caused by more active sun, then scientists would expect to see warmer temperatures in all the layers of the atmosphere, but it doesn't happen. Instead, they have observed the cooling in the upper atmosphere and warming at the surface and in the lower part of the atmosphere. And who is responsible for that? At the lower part, that are greenhouse gases. That is because greenhouse gases that are trapping heat in the lower atmosphere. So we can't blame sun for that. And another study, this is conducted by NASA and this assessment report of this Intergovernment Panel of Climate Change, 2013 to 14. It primarily depicts uh, that human activities, they are responsible for this climate change. In this fifth assessment report, a group of about 1,300 independent scientific experts from countries all over the world, they concluded that, that about 95% probability that humans are responsible for this change. Over the past 50 years, what we majorly Field that uh, there are climatic changes are going on. The industrial activities that our modern civilization depend have raised carbon dioxide and other greenhouses gases like carbon dioxide. It uh, in last 150 years it raises from 280 parts per million to 412 parts per million. Parts per million. So the panel concluded that human proposed greenhouse gases that are primarily responsible for this increase in Earth's temperature. Various evidences of climate change. How do we know? Starting with the global temperature rise. We studied uh, this ice cores drawn from the polar region from Greenland, Antarctica and mountain glaciers show that the Earth climate responds to the changes in greenhouse gas. Ancient evidence, evidence can also be found in tree rings, ocean sediments, coral reefs, and the layer of sedimentary rocks. If we go for this ice cores, this is the study this ice cores. The samples they are collected from the ice called ice cores hold a record of what our planet was like under a thousand years ago. This layer, each layer of the ice. This tells a story about the earth was like when the layer of snow fell. 
for example as the snow deposits onto a growing glacier the temperature of the air imprints on the water molecules then aerosols such as dust ash pollen trace elements and other sea salts that were in the atmosphere at that time these particles particles is the main providing physical evidences of the past global events such as volcanic eruption in this figure this uh, black portion is showing the uh, in that particular uh, time of major volcanic eruption then additionally as the ice compact over time tiny bubbles of the atmosphere including greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane press inside the ice these air pockets fossils a type of fossils provide samples of what the atmosphere was like at that particular time there are some scientific uh, this, uh, this is about the earth climate now earth climate is warming this is data given by nasa temperature data showing rapid warming in the past few decades 2016 was the warmest year since 1880 continuing a long term trend of rising global temperature then warmest years in the 140 years record all have occurred since 2005 with the six warmest years being the six most recent years this is supporting then comes the time series below shows the average variation of global surface temperature dark blue indicates areas cover cooler than average and dark red indicates the areas warmer than average data from 1884 to 2019 then another evidence this is increase of carbon dioxide as i have already told you due to this industrial revolution the atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased it uh, from 280 parts per million to 412 parts per million in last concept this graphical view then the color of the map shifts towards the red with advancing time due to the annual increase of co2 another evidence that is the warming of the ocean the warming of the ocean that is the increase in the ocean heat for the sea water to expand raising sea level it is in uh, 2015 roughly half of the global sea level was caused by the ocean warming that study was done in that time so due to warming oceans the various uh, It is increasing the sea level. Then various uh, this uh, extreme climatic conditions like El Nino events. El Nino, the opposite face of what is this uh, southern oscillation? What in this El Nino is a scientific term that describes the fluctuations in the temperature between the ocean and the atmosphere in the east central in the east central equatorial Pacific. that area is between south america and australia near the equator these deviations from normal surface temperature can have a last scale impact on the weather climate including india how it impacts over this monsoon during the normal monsoon during normal monsoon in india what is going on this uh, peruvian coast have relatively high pressure than the areas near north australia and south east asia so it under high pressure indian ocean is slightly warmer than the adjoining oceans and thus the pressure is low relative due to the warm seas this is why the moisture laden winds move to the indian oceans and from there on to the lands so the pressure on the heating indian land is much lower than that of indian ocean this facilitates the movement of monsoon winds from the sea to indian land without any significant diversion and lead to a healthy monsoon in india and what this el nino effect disturbs how it disturbs the monsoon indian monsoon due to el nino situation 
this normal distribution is affected. There is a change in the way the trade winds, the monsoon winds would blow. The moisture laden winds that should have moved toward the Indian coast. Now move toward the Persian coast, Peruvian coast. Sorry, Peruvian coast. This subcontinent of its shear in the monsoon rains. Greater the temperature and the pressure difference, the greater will be the shortage in the rainfall in India. Then glacial retreat. Glaciers, they are the natural thermometer. In what way? Glacier expand when climate cools and they shrink when it warms. Most glaciers around the world, they are shrinking. Proof that climate is warming. If we go for this uh, study of this Ngothri Glacier, Himalaya, this is a joint study done by NASA and US Geological Survey. Its area is uh, currently is about 30.2 kilometers long and between 0 0.5 to 2.5 kilometers wide. The Ngothri Glacier is one of the largest in the Himalaya. This glacier has been constantly receding since measurement began in 1780s. Data for 61 years in the from 19, 1936 to nine, uh, this uh, 96 shows that the total recession of the Gangotri Glacier is, is about 1,147 meters with the average rate of about 19 meters per year. Over the last 25 years of the 20, 20th century, it has been retreated more than 850 meters, about 34 meters per year, and 76 meters between 1996 and, nine, and 1999, and it's going on. If we go for this graph, this glacier melting in Himalayas has doubled since 2000. Then shrinking ice sheets. The Greenland and the Antarctic ice sheets have decreased in mass. Data from NASA Gravity Recovery Climate Experiment reveals that Greenland lost an average of about 286 billion tons of ice per year between 1993 and 2016. And the Antarctica lost about 127 billion tons of ice per year. This uh, depicting about how much loss. About if we go for this glaciers, about uh, 400 billion tons approximate total glacier loss per year since 1994. But in phase one, then Greenland and Iceland, 294 billion metric tons approximate ice loss per year. This is all data given by NASA. Then annual Arctic uh, sea ice minimum area is, is going on down. Then declining Arctic sea ice. Uh, Arctic sea ice is now declining at a rate of about 12.85% per decade relative to the 18, 1981 to 2010 average. It is declining rapidly. This is a comparative Arctic sea ice status uh, from 1979 and 2019. Then Antarctica, about 127 billion metric tons approximate ice loss per year. Another evidence that is the sea level rise. So the global sea level was about eight inches in the last century. The rate in the last two decades However, it is nearly double that of the last century and is accelerating slightly every year. So, uh, various uh, areas uh, near the shoreline, like in this uh, Republic of this uh, country, this uh, Republic of Maldives, they are vulnerable to this rise of this sea level. Sea level rise is caused primarily by the two factors uh, related to global warming. One is the added water from the melting ice sheets and glaciers and the expansion of the seawater as it warms. This is the first graph showing this uh, based on the satellite data and another is of ground study. So the rate of change is about 3.3 million per year. 
extreme events the occurrence and severity of this weather events like tropical storm droughts heavy intense rainfall heat waves have increased due to this climate change if uh, how this tropical storm we have india has recently faced this tropical storm in fan how these tropical storms are formed high humidity and the ocean temperature of over 26 degrees centigrade they are the major contributors for this tropical storms water evaporates from the ocean surface and comes into the in contact with the mass of cold air forming the clouds this column of low pressure dwells at the center winds form around the column as the pressure in the center column weakens the speed of the wind around it increases so this is how the tropical storms are formed that recently we have faced at india we have faced this tropical this cyclone in fan this in fan this in fan cyclone that is a it is because of this abnormally high sea water temperature of bay of bengal from 32 to 34 degree centigrade and this made the cyclone in fan to become the strongest storm on the record in the bay of bengal this climate change is increasing the damage that cyclone cause in many ways it increasing increasing sea surface temperature that raises the maximum potential energy that a storm can reach and this increasing the rainfall that drops in the storm other evidence this is, a, this is also a major one this is ocean acidification since the industrial revolution the acidity of the surface ocean water has increased it is about about 30% this increase in is the result of humans emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere the amount of this carbon dioxide absorbed by the upper layer of this ocean is increasing uh, by about 2 billion tons per year it leads to ocean acidification what are the effects warming ocean thermal stress sea level rise then change in the storm patterns climatic conditions then changing in precipitation then ocean acidification it is to reduction in the ph level it affects the this uh, sea animals coral reefs bleaching of the coral reefs okay <coughs> no we are shifting to this causes the causes of the climate change the natural causes volcanic eruption ocean currents volcanic releases but it is a very minor volcano is less than 2% of the equivalent amount of co2 released by the human act ocean currents move vast amount of heat across the land and these are the fact natural causes anthropogenic causes man made causes is burning of the fossil fuels then agriculture practices excessive use of fertilizers excessive this nitrogen rich fertilizers in agriculture is contributing to nitrous uh, contributing to nitrous oxide emission to large extent then methane emission from the rice fields methane is produced during flooded this rice cultivation then land use pattern and deforestation excessive deforestation land use changes such as deforestation and shift in the agricultural production can alter the air temperature as well as the water vapor content of the atmosphere for example the crop land they have a high albedo and forest they have a low albedo of different amount of solar energy significant effects of the climate change potential climate change impacts on the health infectious diseases increases well uh, air quality respiratory illness and agriculture crop yield then forest and water resources water quality water supply then coastal areas affecting what way then uh, affecting the biodiversity firstly this uh, rise in sea level that it uh, global warming leads to thermal expansion of sea water along with partial melting of the glaciers such rise would be a threat to the agriculture low lying coastal areas due to submergence of agricultural land as well as intrusion of the sea water into the aquifers then how it affects the agricultural productivity it accelerated physiological development resulting in hastening the maturation and reduce the yield of crops the occurrence of moisture stress 
including flowering, pollination, and grain fill is harmful to most crops. Conditions are more favorable for the proliferation of insects, pests in warmer climates. Certain varieties of crops that are grown near their limits of maximum temperature tolerance, such as rice in Southern Asia, heat spells can be harmful to such crops. So some effects of global warming on agriculture, loss of biodiversity, loss of fertile coastal lands, increased extreme weather, these are some effects. Climate variability, extreme meteorology, uh, this meteorological events, high temperature, heavy storms, droughts, etc. Effect on health. Many vector-borne, water-borne infectious diseases will increase. Increased heat waves will lead to more heat fatalities. And then uh, if we go for this example, vector-borne diseases including malaria, dengue fever, yellow fever, and cephalitis. Then uh, this malnutrition will increase among the poorer society. I'm showing the uh, impact of climate change on human health. How clim climate change and coronavirus? Climate change is not directly related to the cause of the coronavirus, but the damage that we are doing to the nature, natural world does make it more likely that such disease will emerge. Warming climates and increasing variability in weather patterns make it easier to transmit disease of any origin. Environmental damage seems to be increasing the risk of either of the past epidemics and potential of the future pandemic as well. Effect on biodiversity. Global warming presents a profound and emerging threats to biodiversity around the world. As temperature rises, habitats for the plants and animals will change to which they have adapted. For example, this monarch butterflies will lose their wintering habit habitat in the mountains. Then polar bear could be affected by the loss of marine life. Various strategies adopted for mitigation of global climate change. This reduction of energy use, shifting from carbon-based fossil fuels to green energy sources, emerging technologies, national and international actions, individual actions, energy efficiency and conservation. We go for this energy conservation. It's a conscious attitude which need to be developed, implemented, and publicized. Thus, each one of us can contribute to work energy conservation. Adopt renewable energy sources to reduce the carbon emission adopt renewable energy sources. New emerging technologies, development of new technologies such as electric cars, solar cars may reduce the consumption of oil and emissions of carbon dioxide. National and international efforts here. International efforts this United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. In 1992, the country is joined and this international treaty. It urged the nations to reduce the greenhouse gases emissions in the atmosphere based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. Then Kyoto Protocol legally binds 12 countries which have been industrialized since the last 150 years to emission reduction targets. Then Duncan Agreement Reducing human genetic greenhouse gas emissions over time to keep the global average temperature rise below 2 degrees centigrade with, the, with respect to the pre-industrial times. National climate change related efforts. India signed this uh, United Nations Framework Convention in 1992. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is the nodal agency for this. The government of India agreed to the Kyoto Protocol in 26, on 26 August 2002. The mechanism helps stimulate uh, this green investment and help parties meet their emission targets in a cost-effective way. Under clean development mechanism, developed countries, parties can participate jointly with the developing countries toward meeting their greenhouse gas emission reduction target 
This is a case study. This is a budget uh, lamp yojana under the uh, program. The households are charged rupees 15 per CFL, which is a substantial discount from the CFL market price of rupees 120. The difference in the cost is covered through the associated CDM. The BE Bureau of Energy Efficiency is the overall coordinating and managing type, which is expected to save about 4,000 megawatt per year. National and state action plan on climate change. Nash implementation of this national and state action plan on climate change. This, the target is to mitigate the climate change and, uh, to, and adopt to the impacts of specific climate and vulnerabilities. The government of India launched, launched this national action plan on climate change on 30th June 2008 with eight national missions on climate change. These are National Solar Mission, National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, National Water Mission, National Mission for Sustaining a Himalayan Ecosystem, National Mission for a Green India, National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture, National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. Green Climate Fund, what is that? It is the world largest dedicated fund helping wealthy countries reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and enhance their ability to respond to the climate change. It was set up by this United Nations Framework to mention on climate change in 2010. After this Paris uh, Agreement supporting the goal of keeping, uh, to support the goal of keeping average global temperature rise well below two degrees centigrade. What it does this by channeling the climate finance to the developing countries, which have joined other nations in committing to climate action. So climate change challenge, this requires, this is a collective effort from the countries, including by both public and the private sector. Advanced economies have agreed to jointly mobilize significant financial resources. This is an uh, example, this uh, global climate fund funded India's solar rooftop program. This is April 2019. A first disbursement of US dollar 15 million marks, the start of this implementation of, of this global climate fund solar rooftop program in India. The trustee of the Green Climate Fund transferred the fund for the first this private sector project in the, uh, in the country to Nepal. Individual action against climate change. What we can do, it is the duty of every citizen who holds the Earth's resources as a trustee to utilize the same in such a way that a better environment is left behind for our future generation. In nutshell, the consequences of the global climate warming are severe and there is a need for action now. There should be a massive movement towards the environment friendly strategies. This uh, climate change theater. We at the Science City, we have a facility of this climate change theater. This is the India's first climate change theater at Science City Cooking Club. It is second in the world, as only Canada has such theater at Science North Science Center, Sudbury, Ontario. It provides opportunity to the visitors to understand the objectives, uh, to understand the latest climate issues and the human role in mitigating and adopting to climate change. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Balla. Uh, if anybody is having any query or want to ask any question, can put it in the chat box or I will unmute all of you, but one by one, you can ask anything if it is there. Dear friends, thanks for cooperating with us. I would like to tell you that in the future, in coming next week, we are having another webinars and on this important day of the World Environment Day. So I would like yeah, you join with us on the celebration of World Environment Day. The information